quick take, hybrid blockchain, right? That obviously there are multiple types of blockchains. You know, there's public, which, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, most of the currencies obviously are public blockchains that they need full transparency for those transactions, uh, moving data around. There's private, um, which would be, you know, Hyperledger, uh, Corda, some of the, some of the, the, uh, blockchains that have had a lot of focus from, uh, corporate or in particular banks. Um, and then there's hybrid and hybrid is recently got some decent attention because people are, you know, realizing you can have some extra level of value, um, some and some flexibility applied and yet not, not just totally sell short the, uh, the value of having public blockchains. So with public blockchains, you know, fully decentralized, or at least that's their goal. Nothing is purely fully decentralized, but uh, uh, high security value, limited privacy, you know, pretty much uh, everything is, uh, is available to see uh, as it has to be. However, drawbacks are low throughput, network congestion. You can see that uh, they can become expensive in a number of ways, clearly fees, but also even to develop on, right? That there are so many pitfalls and so many things that are different organically to a developer and uh, to a deployment that it's a very expensive thing to undertake depending on how you're using it. Um, it's not scalable generally to enterprise levels. And generally they're, you know, they're inert that there's not uh, anything considered for compatibility with uh, traditional systems. Private blockchains attempted to answer those issues for the banks. One way or another, they limited access, right? They made it so that it wasn't a transparent public chain that anyone could check the validity of. That they do have, or at least uh, they attempt to, and they should have higher throughput and, and better scalability. In practice, a lot of them have failed on this front because a lot of the, the projects took some of the bad parts of blockchain uh, in and didn't consider what they could do uh, otherwise because they were trying to sit in the middle, right? There's no decentralization. It does require trust, which, you know, is uh, reasonable for a lot of the applications. And uh, again, because they took in a lot of the blockchain patterns, the integration with traditional systems suffers uh, a decent amount. So, with hybrid and, you know, we, with hybrid, there are some very abstract uh, things that I could talk about and bore you all forever. But, you know, we basically are in, in, in this section going to talk about Dragon Chain as a, an exemplary hybrid blockchain, let's say, you know, we have lower transaction costs, you know, it basically follows the pattern of uh, private blockchain, yet we're having to integrate public blockchains to leverage the security and leverage other features. And so, we have some flexibility with that integration and therefore are able to keep transaction costs down. We have some pretty tremendous ease of integration features that because we are a hybrid, we can basically say that your business node is just software. You know, what are you doing right now for development, integration and deployment? You can do those things, the same things with Dragon Chain because we are a hybrid blockchain. We have partial consensus nearly instantly and full consistence, uh, sorry, full consensus within hours. This is extremely important because some of the key features of what you want to use a blockchain for, which is proof can be gotten very quickly and in time can be very powerful. And that's the whole point of it that, you know, you can't have perfection immediately, but 99.9% percent of all situations, you don't need that. You know, you won't actually know that a, a piece of data is going to be in question for months, typically. I, anyway, it's, it's an interesting piece that it, it is very much a spectrum of trust and a spectrum of time. You know, the longer you wait, the, uh, the less you have to trust because you'll have proof. Smart contracts can be written in any language. Extremely important for integration because your developers who know your system who know your customers and know your data intimately are able to write the smart contracts in the languages that they are most comfortable with. The languages they are using, the languages that your other systems are already using. It's a beautiful thing. Smart contracts can be upgraded and because they're on chain an upgrade is very much, uh, it's a very familiar thing because it, it'll feel like 
deploying a new version of uh, you know web service code, but it's on chain. So you can prove at any point that the processing that occurred on this transaction that resulted in this system state you can actually see the contract that it ran through at that time. I mean, it's all contemporaneous, everything's still there, and the state is retained. Next, uh, only the proof is decentralized. We've we've actually you know, come to the realization that this is one of the more important things that can be described about Dragon Chain. And the reason that we're a hybrid blockchain is that your data, you know, the business data, your customer's data, data that is sensitive, possibly regulated, does not need to be decentralized. And if it is decentralized, that's up to you, like say for disaster recovery, for data sharing amongst your uh, other parts of your business or your partners. But it's certainly not something that needs to be decentralized, decentralized and transparent to the world, right? That with Dragon Chain, only the proof is decentralized by default. And your sensitive data is kept private it's kept on your uh, on your own blockchain, on your own node, uh, under your full control, and you have selective data exposure. So uh, the system's fully and natively capable of GDPR, CCPA, or HIPAA compliance because of the way that we handle the data, and that you have a measurable proof, a measurable security value. It isn't just oh, I I I feel good, so I can go to sleep tonight. It is literally that you can, you know, look at a dashboard and see, see what really is in place. You know, the state of your data, the state of uh, your systems, and you know, go to go to sleep at night <clears throat> with some level of measurable proof that uh, everything is uh, being handled as appropriate, and you're not going to be getting in any trouble, and your customers are going to be all safe and happy. And when we talk about measurable security, measurable proof. We're literally saying that instead of saying that we have so many yada hashes of hash power applied onto this one transaction, you know, that, and we're measuring from Bitcoin and Ethereum, even though we have other blockchains that are interchained, we're, we're tracking hash power on Bitcoin and Ethereum because it's easily obtained and that we're seeing uh, tens of millions of dollars daily applied to uh, most you know, most days to transactions, and it does vary, but generally uh, within a month we're seeing about a quarter of a of a of a billion dollars, and you know within a year we're we're seeing about uh, about four billion dollars worth of proof every year, and that happens for every single transaction, no matter how mundane the data is behind it, and that's a key point, and it's because we've scaled the system and scaled the economy. You know, to back up a lot of this, we've you know, done so much research early on and we have a lot of intellectual property beyond just the patents, but we have a lot of knowledge surrounding how to use blockchains that isn't commonly available. You don't see it in the, in, in the tech press or anything. And a lot of this has exposed itself through these patents, right? That uh, we, in 2018 received the interchain patent and it has since been broadened to include you know any any blockchain uh, communications between blockchains so from one blockchain to another that our interchain patent covers that and it's primarily an interoperability patent we use it everywhere on our system every day the entire uh the entire architecture uses it natively we have a, a patent that uh, you know, we call the time patent, but it's basically use of time as a measure to scale a blockchain network. So it, it is a scalability patent. And that, in my opinion, is probably the most interesting IP that we have. Uh, how do I say we flipped the head on uh, scarcity. Instead of having hardware as scarcity in our network, we have time. And that allows us to scale both the network itself and the economy because we're we aren't tied to the hardware so it, it's a very interesting thing because you know, you can't manipulate time and uh you know it has a a couple of values as well for security including against you know 51 percent attacks but uh there are a number of a number of answers to that that we have in our platform um and then the last and most recent just a few weeks back we were awarded the smart contract orchestration patent, which uh, effectively models RESTful architecture onto blockchain. You know, looking at how 
the architecture of the internet works to give it the scalability that we know and love. You know that uh, in the early days, the internet was uh, a few uh, weird little protocols, and you know the web, where you know basically informational, mostly textual websites that you know quickly moved to streaming audio, streaming video, and now you know things that back then would have uh, seemed totally. Uh, crazy are now possible. We really went after this in terms of, okay, we already do this. Um, and, and this amounts to basically tying uh, a string of smart contracts together, smart contracts and ledger transactions together to do a uh, particular workflow process. And that, you know, a business uh, workflow can, you know, have forks and it can have decision points and it can have places where things are filtered, where state is changed and or where uh, things are recorded for, uh, you know, regulatory reasons or, or anything else. And to make a system truly flexible, instead of coding your entire process in one smart contract, this allows you to break up components and reuse those components, which is particularly valuable. But also, to maintain the state between every single uh, process, which is very interesting for process improvement and for you know debugging the process or or going back and evaluating why something went wrong, right? The fact that every even the most mundane data is stored and you can actually you know whittle down what went wrong and how you can fix it. So, and there, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's you know high level best description, and that is it. Quick take: hybrid blockchain.